tree here. There's, in, in the autumn we were catching quite a few fish, and literally directly out from here. On that seam of that current, there must be something they like. They just quite lie in that, lie in that bit there. Hello, right, I'm on Fish Ponds Fishing with Simon Furness. Um, Fish Ponds is on the River Tay, the lower section of the Tay, just upstream from Schoon, Schoon Estate, Schoon Palace. Um, just the reason I'm here today is to speak to Simon about, well, the opening line on his website um, and his film that he had done a couple of years ago is um, that the attraction of the of fish ponds is you never know if you're going to get a nine pounder or a 35 pound belter to grab on. Um, and the whole point of being here today is that statement itself um, pretty much came true for Simon a couple of weeks ago um, and just in this pool that's below us. So we Q&A session, just catch up with Simon and see what we're up to. Um, Simon, how many, you're, you're, you're manager on fish ponds, how, how many managers are you? There's five of us, five of us involved, yes. Cool, um, and you've had the beat for how long? This is our second full season. We'd had a half season and then this is our second full season. Yeah, good. So we're still greenhorns. We're yeah. still learning very, very much. Yeah, good. Um, and how long is the beat? Two miles. Two miles, right. Two miles, both banks alternate top and bottom beats. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the lower section of the beat yes. we're on just now. This is the longest part of the, the, um, the bottom beats, the longest bit. And the right height of water is, is a lot more water to go at too. Um, the, the most productive pool is at the top of the craigs if the lower water and the fish are coming through. Yeah. But at this height of water, and certainly in the back end, this is a great shot down here. Yeah. Now everywhere is having a bit of a tough time this spring, um, it seems with fish numbers, but you were lucky enough to get a good fish. Um, yes, I found the, found the, the needle in a mighty big haystack. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's right last ditch saloon, right at the end. I mean, I was nearly out of the pool when I hooked it. Um, but that, that's it, you, you never know when it's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, um, so fish fantastic. of a lifetime. Yeah, fish of a lifetime. So it's taken how many years to get a fish that size? I don't want to go into that one, I don't think. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, so, uh, I'm yeah. a bit long in the tooth. And <laughs> it, was getting, it was getting a bit desperate. It's all right, I get it. School. I won't ask again. <laughs> um, so here we are. What's, what's this pool's name? This is basically we're in a Lunkety pool. We share this on alternate days with uh, Bankill Pit, Pit Lockery Beat, and they have it every other day. Hmm. And uh, Upper Red Gorton share the above the Shockey Burn, which is just above us, where that comes into Lunkety Pool. Um, and then Upper Red Gorton have lower down tadges, which they share with Walt Mill. Right. Yeah. No, it's a lovely stretch of water. It's a big expanse of a pool, but I'm assuming there's a few taking spots that you focus in on. Yes. Um, you've got. You, it's a bit difficult to see today, but you can see the ripply water over there, which is some cairns, quite rocky, and it comes quite close to the surface. Mm. And at the back of it, there's a big drop off into six, seven foot of water. And you've got this channel coming down this side and the cairn in the middle. So you've got a lovely tail of this pool where the fish are going to come in through off the point of that croy. And it, it, it's a real ambush point, really. Right. And yeah, okay, so enough of faffing around. Tell us about this fish. What, uh, what, what were you doing? You were harling? Yeah, I was harling. Yeah. Um, as I said, there's some cairns over there. Yeah. And the vision, it was quite a lot lower than it is today. And the visions were getting actually hanked up on the, on the cairns. Okay. So I wound them in and I just had the couple of kinox out. Anyway, I got to buy the croy. I thought, oh, sod it. I'll chuck out a, a vision down the a long line out the middle rod. Yeah. About three turns later, all hell broke loose. <laughs> and, uh, so it was a good take? Oh, yes. There was line disappearing at a high rate of knots. My biggest worry was it was actually going to go out of the pool into the hard water down into Tadgers. Uh. And that was going to be difficult because uh. trying to follow that on my own was going to be exceedingly hard. Okay. But I was quite lucky I was able to draw the boat up onto the croy. And I started to play it from there because I'd only got the other, I got the other two rods wound in. And the biggest problem is, is anybody who's played a fish like that is getting it out of a hard current yeah. 
which they don't want to come out of Especially and if they get, get into it into the, the back eddy. Yeah. 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 And eventually, I would say at least 20 minutes later, I managed to get it out of the hard water, mm. having taken three good runs way out down the pool, yeah. got it into the back water. Well, once it was in the slack water, it's actually quite easy to get, get netted. Great. Um, Great. I think it becomes, they become a bit disorientated when you get them into slack water like that. Yeah. And they're just sort of just wondering, where, where am I going to go? Mm. And, uh, and, and got it in the net and uh, went to try and get the hooks out and they came out in the net. So this, you were on your own? Yep. Oh, okay. Yes, it was. A, and there was nobody on the bank to do, <laughs> say help to or anything. It was, a, as I say, it was probably about four o'clock. It was four o'clock I hooked it, I know, because it came up on my phone, the picture. Right. Um, so, yes, sir, and uh, it blew a hole through the landing net, um, which was quite interesting. It's one of the big McLean's whale nets, you yes. know, the big butterfly nets, right? Okay. So, right. so when we put it back in the water, uh, having weighed it, whilst it was still in the net in the water, I've got mm. a separate set of scales I weigh it with, mm. and it's got a slider on it, so the slider stops to the weight the fish was. Okay. So I then thought, right, I'll put the landing net on top of it to get an idea of the length. Whereupon placing it at the bottom of the boat, it decided it didn't like that, which is understandable, and took off, made a hole in the net. So then I put it back in the water and it immediately shot out through the hole in the net, but it came into the shallow water at the back of the croy. So it was very in a very um, photogenic position to okay. take a good photograph of it. Yeah, I've seen that photo, so that's the big flank of it. Yeah. Yeah, okay, fabulous. And the, the pink down the side is my big fink forefinger stuck up the side <laughs> of the lens. That's all right, you're excited. <laughs> um, um, I think that, yeah, okay, so a fabulous fish. So what, what sort of length did it say on the, what, what length are these, these net handles? Well, the handle, there's a part of it covered up, but it's it, the total length when you get the handle right out is 38 inches. Okay. And then you've got the, the grippy part, which is past its nose, so mm. it was, 40, 40, 41 inches Goodness long. Goodness me, right, okay. The well, girth, I have no idea what girth it was, but yeah. you can see by the depth of the photograph, it was a, That's a fish. It was a big solid lump. Fantastic, I mean, you can, yeah. The, the issue with online and taking a photo about the size of fish is everybody's got, it's subjective, isn't it? When you see a photo, you don't know, but when you've got that length, um, you can see that scale. Oh yes, That's, I mean, I mean, it doesn't matter. You That's could take that fabulous. picture, of that fish in two or three different poses, and you mm. could say, "Oh, that's only fifteen pound." Or another picture. Oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I must admit, one of the reasons why I do like to be able to lie them down flat is actually that you can actually see the depth of a fish mm. far mm. better. And um, what about the quality, the condition of the fish? Was it absolutely immaculate? Right. Okay. It was Fantastic. not a blemish on it. There cool. was two sea lice on its tail. Right. Um, so do you think it was in just off that particular tide, or do you think it'd been in a couple of days? Do you think maybe? No, that, no, it hadn't, it had been in less twelve hours, maybe the tide before. I don't know. Yeah, with the lice and whatnot. But okay, fantastic. Goodness me, and it went back okay. Well, well, he made a slight technical error because having decided he'd shot out of the net and laid itself on the back of the croy. Yeah. So I went, took a photograph of it, and then I went moved slightly, and it took off made a very um, uh, long-winded way of getting back in the river, but uh, it got there eventually under okay. its own steam, yeah, okay. like a missile, to be honest. The thing uh, is, it's an interesting point in putting fish back, um, and Jimmy, is it Lapsley? The, uh, Jimmy, the other, the, the other manager with you? Oh, uh, Jim McDonald. McDonald, sorry, um, mentioned earlier. It's a really good point, is we all try to do our best, regardless when it comes to fish handling and best practice. But sometimes it's just out of your control, isn't it? It is out of your control. And I mean, a fish of your lifetime, mm. and you actually want to get back in the water. I mean, I actually physically never touched that fish. I mean, I've got big hands. And I know damn well <laughs> right. I would not have got my hand around the wrist of that tail, of that Goodness. fish. Ah, you, could, you could tell, you know, looking yeah. at there, if I'd wanted to hold it, and uh, yeah. I would have had a job to have got my hand around the wrist of that. Well, thank goodness fish. you didn't give it the big Glasgow pedal. <laughs> you know, it seems to do, but yeah. Okay. No, well, that's the worst thing. I mean, and it, you can understand how it happens when f people are handling fish. Okay, it's but to hold yeah, it against it. their body and that is absolutely a no-no yeah, because it takes that. all the slime away. Yeah. If you've got to do it, hold it just in the water, just level with the water if you can. And, but and a 30 pound fish, and it's only got to flick its tail once, and you've, it's washed. Yeah. Uh, 
it's you yeah. know yeah especially like holding a kicking leg isn't yeah. it yeah yeah incredible so yeah very good okay well fantastic story and and uh, but yeah okay well hopefully there's another few out there hopefully it doesn't take um, well as many years to catch another one for you. <laughs> as we said in the Wait previous uh, interview you've got to be in it to win it and yes it's uh, i mean i'm getting on in here so we won't go into that one too mm. much but probably how many thousands of casts have I made in my lifetime before I've actually got a fish. I've yeah. caught a bigger one in Russia, but that doesn't count. I've had a 27 and a half on the spay on the fly. That was my biggest up until then. Right. But that. So you've experienced some bigger fish then. So on the fly, if you took this fish on the fly in this pool in this particular run, how would that have gone for you, do you think? Well, last year I had a, <laughs> a 25 sign, right? up in the Red Bray, okay. and I was again on my own with a 15-foot right. fly rod, right. and I had a hell of a job with it. I couldn't get it out of the current. I had to go upstream and get into the into the head of the pool where mm. there was a bit of slack water, yeah. so I could get again give me half a chance to net it. I mean, it is not not very good on your own, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. I w one would much rather have. Um, a client with you that so somebody to share it with yeah but um okay i mean that's that's just an absolute treasure and what a fantastic story uh, what what we're trying to do today is is you know tell people there is there's a chance of one of these big fish yes yeah. there's, uh, there's, there's not as many chances as there was but however yeah, there if you come out with you come out with jimmy come out with the rest of the guys you, you put yourself in the best chance of catching one of these absolutely well, you do and uh, one of our guys jimmy lapsey one of our other team members yeah he's always said 15th of march is when the big boys start to come in okay and it was it was to the day mm. and uh, so th th now this week we're what are we the last week of march new tile have had a 27 pounder uh, there's still those good high quality fish evading net seals and everything else i mean they've got a real struggle to make it these days yeah. oh, they're, they're survivors Anyway, Simon, thank you very much. Appreciate that. We'll take a wee wander up and down, see what other footage we can get. But uh, yeah, you see you next Craig. Week. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, book your fishing. Fish, uh, what is it? Fishpondsfishing.co.uk. Um, uh, have a wee look. And also Fishpal as well. Uh, worthwhile having a look at their uh, profile too. Um, I'll catch you next time. Cheers, bye.